What springs to mind when I say Paris? You might say the Eiffel Tower or Bottle Jobs. Dread. He's got another! He's got another! He's got a hat-trick! Fly away from Paris Saint-Germain! But there's one thing that's distinctly Parisian. No, not bracelet scams, but it's Metro System. And today, we'll tell you the story of how it grew to be one of the biggest Metro Systems in the world. Off we go to the mid-19th century, and with the arrival of the railways to Paris, there was a burning desire to continue them into the inner districts of the city. However, with this being the People's Republic, Parisians were rather concerned that any system could be interfered with by the government. <laughs> which they were strongly against. This dispute would go on for nearly half a century, while cities like London, Budapest and even Glasgow were getting their own subway systems. Despite there being numerous proposals for a system over the decades, it was in the 1890s when things really started to kick off. The city would adopt plans produced by a chap called Fujons Biavenue, who would be known as the father of the Paris Metro. Biavenue's plans would only serve the city of Paris, as residents were worried that extending the lines into the suburbs would reduce their safety and stations would be close together to effectively disincentivize large railways or the state from taking over. Unlike systems such as London, the Paris Metro would be designed holistically from the start, with nine lines being part of the initial proposals. Construction on the first line commenced in November 1898 and was opened on the 19th of July 1900 during the Paris World's Fair. The first section would run from east to west of the city, from Porte de Maillot to Porte de Vassin, which made up, unsurprisingly, today's Line 1. Once the first line was up and running, this would become a catalyst for an explosion and expansion of the system, and by the 1920s, the network had eight lines. During that time, the Paris Metro had competition on its hands in the form of the Nord Sud Company. With the metro system primarily being built using the cut and cover method, this meant that the route of the metro lines was determined by the roads above. The Nord Sud looked to change this, offering more direct routes unconstrained by the street pattern, using methods similar to the London Underground. However, given that Paris's ground conditions were less than ideal, plans were amended to use the cut and cover method under roads after all. The company would eventually build two lines called Line A and B, but the company would go out of business in 1931 so lines would be taken over by the metro and would become lines 12 and 13. Some of the legacy of the Nord Sud company still remains in metro stations today, particularly with the tiling, which differs from other metro lines. By the 1930s, the system had 13 lines and covered much of the city of Paris, so despite the reluctance from Parisians, the network would get extended beyond the city into the suburbs with the first place being Blion Billingcure in 1934, and this would be the catalyst for the metro to extend beyond the city limits, and by 1949, eight lines had extended into the suburbs. After World War II, the city would focus on modernization of the system rather than expansion, with one of the most notable updates being some of the lines converted into rubber tire metro systems. What on earth are rubber tire metros, you may ask? Well, as the name suggests, the trains have rubber tyres instead of conventional steel ones that trains normally have. This makes the trains essentially guided buses with a middle rail to provide power and don't move on two rails like normal railways. The first line converted, being the first in the world, was Line 11, but in time, Lines 1, 4 and 6 would also follow suit. For much of the second half of the 20th century, the metro system would be in the shadows compared to its new brother, the RER, which was taken Paris by storm. The first new line in 63 years would come in 1998, when line 14 was opened, which was much different to lines before it. Not only would it fully operate automatic trains, but most of the stations would be over a kilometre apart, meaning trains could go much faster compared to its older siblings. Moving forward into the future, the Paris region has big ambitions for the metro system, which is dubbed the Grand Paris Express. 
the project will see the construction of four new lines, including Line 15, which is meant to be a ring line around Paris, allowing folk to avoid having to travel into the centre, thankfully. With an opening date set for 2030, it's a more realistic prospect than PSG having any European success anytime soon.